I'm ready to die. This thing's probably not gonna get in, right? All right, any recap needed questions and stuff before we start? No. All right. This is going to be an RPI, meaning a roleplay intensive session. So, let's get into it real quick. Serena. Last time it was your turn. Or at least you were the one that saw this thing getting trying to get inside trying to cr crawl inside the area what do you do um does anyone remember that i had a permission form in the bag holding someone to take it out and stab it onto uh onto my arrow so when it comes through i can shoot it and then me and Esco can run out the door and hopefully we don't die which much. door All right. Is that something you want to do now? I'm just gonna have it ready, I guess, for if it does break through. If not, we can just go out the door. All right. I just want to remind you, corruption orb strengthens a creature, but also sends it into a rage. Hopefully, it attacks anything other than us. Actually, anything that it can see. Anything that right. it sees. Right now, the only thing it can see is you two. Right. Actually, I mean, we would be fine with stealth, but I think we just gonna have to fight the thing. This thing Without right it. now. Roll me a perception check. Hmm. Wait, give me a second. I think I gotta try something for Estel. Um, post this real quick. I gotta help Estel here. Don't forget, uh, Serena took a little bit of that, uh, potion that I have. The vampire poison. So, I figured mm -hmm. I should bring that up. Just in case you forgot. Yeah, no, no, she has the buff on it. I can see the vampire poison. All right. You're gonna do a thing. I'm gonna trust you guys not to meta game. All right. Make it easier for our dear friend here. What do you mean by meta game? What was that thing? How's all that? Uh, that means when you see something as a player and your character does not see it, you should act like you don't see it. All right. Let me just move stuff back where they are. I made this, the map smaller just to make it easier for Terry to load in because he might be lagging very hard. Don't worry, Nopus. I lowered the map size. You should be good now. I'm sure you see this location now. Just try not to meta game. Pretend you don't know those locations. Now, now I see. Yeah. yeah, just pretend you don't see them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you good now, Estelle? 
I'm dying. Don't worry. Don't worry. It'll be easier for you to load now. I lowered the data requirement to load the map. Just create some very basic walls, I guess. There you go. All right, let me know when you are ready once again, Perry. I think it's good now. For now. Right. Just to restart, because you, you might have been distracted earlier. Serena, you notice this bat-like vampire creature that reeks of rotten blood trying to smash through the trap door in the ceiling. The steel bolts are holding the trap door in place. However, this thing looks like it's about to break through. Not yet, but it, it will. What do you do? Um, I tell Essel I still have the corruption orb because I think she can put some type of trick scheme to make it talk to people. Otherwise, we can just fight it in here and hopefully we don't die in the process. Hmm. Up to you. Okay. Do you have a way to move the corruption orb? I can put it on my arrow and shoot at it in its face. How will you attach it to your arrow? Take it on there. Dab it in it. And hopefully it gets stuck onto the thing. That's pretty much all I got. She got a better plan. We could just kill it. Yeah, we could. We could. Down to do whatever, honestly. But there is like more than one. Or we could go down. Uh, more than one. Maybe stairs. A perception check. Let's see if you know that information. But between the four and perception check, right now you hear one over here. The one that's trying to get in, and you heard a screech like in the semi far distance, probably a few tens, maybe 50, 100 meters away. Sounds like there is one further away, but who knows how far it could be or how far it close to be. We can try to kill this thing, but who knows if we'll be able to. Never fought one before. I saw you there. I think he has crashed. Once again, I think so too. Rip. I was wondering, is is this Discord so far, or this voice channel like hosted not in, in A? Because it says, uh, the voice channel says Singapore 905. And I'm wondering if, uh, I'm wondering oh, if like the high ping. Let's change it. US East. Uh, yeah. Okay, there. Let's see if that let's Wait, see if that helps. We're now on the server. Maybe that would help on Hello? Hello? Yes. Okay, yes. just making sure because it said it wasn't 
getting a mic. That's what I was making sure. Yeah, we. Yeah. We switched. Earlier it was, the mic was a bit low earlier. And now it works properly. Let's just wait for him. While this is happening. High end. Yes. While this is happening, let's just get your story out of the way. Okay. All right. I'll just move Serena and Estel here so that they can see. All right. I don't remember. Was I inside or outside the gate at this point? Uh, we'll take it from outside right now. So that it kind of I like a refresher. All right. You got off your boat, Hyan, over here, or your, it's more like a canoe, or like, it's not exactly a proper boat, more like a shaft. You got off, and then over here, you see a castle. You hear a lot of people talking, you see, you see some lights on it, and then over here, you see the insignia, or the symbol. That you realize belongs to the Van Linton clan. Uh, clan. What is it you do? Uh, I very quickly get up into the castle. To all right, move your character. There's a ladder over here. All right, this vampire greets you as he seems to notice who you are. You've met him before, however, you don't exactly know who he is. He's, he greets you with, Sir, here to see him, lady, I, I assume. Yes, oh. I, I need to get help from her. Hmm. Very well. As you enter the castle, uh, actually, follow me. And then he un he unlocks the door, and then leads you in over here. All right, follow me. Leave your weapons out here, please. I'll take them, says this guy. Uh, I give him, obviously I give him my weapons. All right. And then he gestures you to head inside the castle. You head inside the castle, and you are met with this lizard folk that is wearing that of a roguish butler suit. He he sees you and says, Ah, welcome, welcome to Castle Sinrio. How, how may I help you? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to... Trying to give some information and get some help from Sneria. Uh, uh, do you know where she is currently? Ah, I do. Follow me. She's currently holding a meeting. But for now, follow me. He unlocks the door, then opens. You follow him. Again, he unlocks this door. Follow him again. I believe you've left your weapons outside, is this true? I did. Wonderful. Follow me then. And then he heads up the stairs. Alright, you guys get over to this location. 
he approaches and says, Give me a second. Then he opens the door. And then you hear them bustling and talking about a plan, about a particular alliance. However, you can't exactly hear it from here. And then you hear, uh, Pardon my interruption, milady. You seem to have uh, a guest. And then a familiar voice. You hear Sinria say, A guest? Who might it be? And then the lizard folk looks at you and gestures you in. And as you get in, you see this small squirrel or ferret looking guy and says, You! Who are you? What's your business here? Uh, I'm, I'm high end. I, uh, I know scenario. My queen? Is, is this true? Yes, mm -hmm. it is true. Let him through. I wish to speak to him. As you wish, milady. He steps aside. He steps aside and lets you through. And with that, you see this woman brimming with magic next to her. And then you see a few men that you realize are battle ready with this information plus your passive perception outside you notice that they were they seem to be preparing for a battle she gestures you to follow her and then as the vampires step aside she heads over to this area What is it you need, Hyun? Uh, I'm in the middle of an important alliance meeting right now. Uh, I have some information that might that might interest you. Just south of you, mm -hmm. there's there's the one keep, and I just saw the yes, mist watch hideout. Yes, I just saw a bunch of vampires were there, and I saw the. Uh, vampire Empress Le drop off or uh, uh, leave some kind of captive that looked important. Hmm. Why would you leave a captive in such a location? Uh, I don't know, but the one member of my party, he really did not seem to like the fact that this person was a captive. It was almost like he knew knew her from somewhere and he went running in after her to rescue her hmm. it is not uncommon to have such events happen Vera is known to capture significant important and important people to those that have the, that she can use to try and manipulate However, she would never give up a, a resource or a person, no matter how little, without a proper trade. Do you have any more information as to why she has let this individual go? Uh, I don't, I don't think it was necessarily letting her go. It seemed more like a, a business deal, like a transaction with her. It wasn't. Mm. It wasn't that she was giving or just surrendering. Or it was more. It was more. She wanted something out of them. What are the entails of this transaction? Can you can you repeat that? What are the entails of this transaction? What entails it? Uh. What went down? What what was traded? What was given? Do you have any more information about I, the particular trade? I I don't remember exactly what was traded, but it did look like there was some kind of trade. 
Roll me a history check, Ryan. Nineteen. You seem to have noted, uh, remembered that Vera was given a few red glowing orbs in exchange for which you recognize as a a, a, a vampire. She then proceeded to feed on a particular vamp on that particular vampire, which you haven't seen before. Vampires feeding on vampires is not exactly the most common thing, as they do not get sustenance from each other. However, it is exactly what happened. Vera fed on this woman before she traded her in for some of those glowing bloodshot colored crystals that is all you remember with your 19 history i i seem to remember uh i seem to remember that she did that she even that she uh got a few red orbs that's as i'm thinking about it a little bit more she got a few red orbs as we told red orbs you say yeah i i think they were glowing but i can't remember and the strangest thing happened, I've never seen a vampire do this, is she fed on a little bit on the prisoner that she had. Mm, a vampire fed on a human prisoner? I, I do not think. It, that is too... No, the, the prisoner looked like it was a vampire too. And then you are positive that you saw some red glowing materials. It, Correct. That's what I saw. And it seemed the other people in my party seemed to have seen it too. Wait here. And then she steps away, opens the door. And then you hear them conversing. You hear her conversing with which you recognize the second voice as the one that you saw earlier, the the mage or the ascended looking person that was brimming with power over her. They were talking about something about now Vera has what's called to be the bloodstone. And then you hear something about Vera trying to speed up the process of uh, the opening process of the blood moon or the portal. And then you you hear as her name is Hurla, according to Sanria, you heard it. Hurla says something about possibly venturing to the world tree. I'm trying to stop that portal from opening. Otherwise, she says, from the intelligence that she has gathered from and with Sanria's father, it seems that Harkin, Vera, and Marqueth, three different undead armies, are working together to try and possibly open the blood blood moon immediately to try and get the demons onto the human realm. And then you hear Sinria smash through the tables. And then she talks to her men in a very loud and stern voice. She says something about mobilizing a unit to try and scout what the movements of the enemies are. And then... The left side of the room, from what you can hear, because you did roll a 24 on perception. Oh, wait, no, that wasn't you. Roll me a perception. I think it like a 3, you know that way. <laughs> With a 17 in your perception, you hear on the left side of the room, you hear that group number A1, they said, is ready to mobilize. And then Sinria immediately says, Get confirmation from her father, Sanri says. She says these exact words. Mobilize group A1 
get confirmation from my father. I want you to monitor every movement they make, every transaction that is about to happen here on the northeast to northwest side of Rifton. Is that understood? And then her man says yes. And they start uh, getting out their seat, or that's what you assume, because you hear chairs creaking on the ground, and then them kind of... Uh, you hear the rattles of their armor as they as, as they stand up. They immediately head out the door from whence you came. And then you hear absolutely nothing for now. And then you hear footsteps come back to you. Seems you've given me fairly valuable information, Hyen. But I believe you wouldn't have approached my abode without a proper reason. What is it you need? Uh, my, my friends, they, they went into that keep by themselves. And I'm afraid they're in danger and I need help getting them. And if you, and if you don't come with me, I'm going to go myself and it's probably, I could die. And I know you wouldn't like that. You're telling me they went into Mistwatch on their own? Yup. I have some troops stationed right outside that particular hideout. Follow me. Newt? Yes, ma'am! As the head of my knights you are to assist my friend in whatever he plans to accomplish however once you return to me you will give me every bit of information you have gathered from the mistwatch hideout is this understood yes ma'am will do and then he starts to ready his arms and then you hear as this guy tries to whisper to Sinery, a roll me a perception check once again. You hear this. But, but ma'am, is it wise to spend such resources to help a nobody? How does this benefit our movement at all? And then you hear Sinery says, no matter, Cruz. I don't just move from what for what benefits my kingdom. And then she walks away, takes a sit, seat on her throne, and then she whispers something to this girl. However, this one you can't hear, no matter how high you roll. Kyurla then looks at you and then she asks you to approach. Uh, okay. She touches your forehead and you feel a searing pain on your forehead but but immediately the mark on your forehead dissipates. Kyurla then says in a monotone voice you are now no longer under control of the dark king the shadow king and then you don't you don't exactly know who that is and this is when newt approaches you and says so, we're taking my fleet with me, right? And we will head over to wherever you want me to go. And I'll help you in this combat, I assume? Yeah, we're, we're going to Mistwatch, which is south of here. 
Wonderful. Should I ready the horses for you, sir? Oh. It'd be nice if I had one too. Yes, please. He looks at Sainria. Sainria looks at him, and then you. Sainria gives you a brief, but sweet smile. You recognize that smile from when you two were dating. It basically means, be safe. And you know her stare. You've been with her for a while. She only gives that smile when she needs to do something, as she can't exactly leave just like the duties that are given to her by her father you know that if it wasn't but uh with this entire thing going on she would have come and helped you personally however with that brief smile she immediately turns to the troops over here and they start talking about a battle plan about harkin and stuff but this is when you are gestured by cross he says Sir, this is private information. It would be best if you are on your way. Uh, okay, yeah, we can get going. All right, Newt is coming with you. All right, let us see if Enopus is here now. <clears throat> Do you want me to stream the game for me on Discord? And I'll move Brawl forward. I can very much do that for him. Let's wait for him to... Uh, kinda? Kinda like Rev Cheap. From Narnia, but... That's what he reminds me of, a bit to more... be honest. Yeah. <laughs> kinda, actually. I'll try to stream his perspective. I won't be able to read Discord chat, though. However, I think this a good thing. Ah, uh, this one. Here we go. So can you try viewing the stream? See if it works out for it. Can you see that? I'll move it accordingly if he moves. I'm logged in on his account right now, so. Uh, 
Let's see. We might have to postpone this session if Esther won't be able to make it. Because he's a vital part of this area. And I wouldn't want to play the game for him because it's an important experience. Let's see if this works out. Let's see. And if I lower the voice rate to 32 bits, maybe I will make it better for him. Hmm. Oh, he. He joined the call again, Opus. How is it? Yeah, all right, no problem. So are you guys free tomorrow or when are you guys free? Whenever, because I don't, I'm not working currently until I go back to school. So I'm just waiting to go back to school. So I'm free whenever. Yeah, I'm free whenever right. tomorrow. How too. about you, Hyan? I'm free whenever tomorrow, too. Alright. So, let's ask us to... Tomorrow, same time. So, sound good to you. Alright. I think it's better to cut it short because there's about to be a lot of revelations that's about to happen, especially high end recognizing that Sanri is starting to mobilize her own army. She's starting to have a actual authority over figures that that's just not her father's. I just want to point out every time we about we're about to get some vampires fighting, something comes up. <laughs> I know, right? One of these days, I'll get my, I'll, I'll get the one thing I want out of this campaign. One of these days. <laughs>